So thanks for the opportunity to talk about um, the ADAM trial. Um, this was a uh, pragmatic cluster randomized trial of ambulatory toxicity management in women with early stage breast cancer starting adjuvant or neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy. Um, so the background uh, for this trial is that um, we know that uh, amongst patients receiving systemic therapy, um, there are high rate, there's a high unmet need around symptom management. Uh, many of these patients get chemotherapy at the cancer clinic, but experience all the side effects and toxicities um, in between the visits to the cancer center when they're at home. So there's been substantial interest to try to figure out ways of how we can better support patients. Um, and we decided to focus on the breast cancer population specifically for our trial because we had some local data from Ontario, Canada, which is where I live in practice, um, that um, almost one in two women receiving adjuvant chemotherapy for breast cancer would have an emergency room visit or hospitalization during therapy. Uh, and just to put things in context, uh, the usual duration of adjuvant treatment for breast cancer, uh, at least the chemotherapy component, is about four months. Um, and after a successful pilot study, we moved on to our uh, randomized trial. Uh, the randomized trial involved 20 centers from across, from across the province of Ontario, and they were randomized in a one-to-one -one ratio to the intervention or control. Uh, what was different about our trial was that it was not an individually randomized trial. And what I mean by that, uh, um, we didn't individualize individually randomized patients, but rather we introduced the intervention that each one of the centers that were randomized to the intervention arm as a process improvement. And so the expectation was that all women who were starting adjuvant chemotherapy or neoadjuvant chemotherapy for breast cancer during, um, uh, during the study recruitment would be offered the intervention. Uh, and the intervention included uh, proactive outreach by, chemo by nurse oncology nurses with uh, training and managing chemotherapy toxicities uh, at two time points following each chemotherapy cycle. Our primary outcome for the study was um, the rate, the mean number of emergency room visits or hospitalizations per patient. Um, and this was uh, evaluated utilizing uh, uh, available administrative data available in Ontario, Canada. So rather than asking individual patients, have you had an emergency room visit or looking in the charts of these patients, we, we utilized comprehensive uh, province-wide data. We also um, uh, included some patient reported outcomes. So about 25 patients in each, in each one of the participating centers, including the intervention control we're also um, filling out questionnaires, including uh, toxicity uh, questionnaires, questionnaires on quality of life, anxiety, uh, depression, coordination of care. And so what we found that um, is that uh, there was no difference in emergency room visits and hospitalizations in the intervention arm compared to the uh, control arm, but we did see um, lower uh, grade three toxicity rate in the intervention arm and lower decline in quality of life. Um, we did not see any differences in anxiety or depression or self-efficacy uh, after the trial. So there are a number of unique issues that I wanted to highlight um, about our trial. Um, so first, this was a, um, as, I meant, as I mentioned, a process improvement uh, intervention. So everyone in the um, intervention uh, centers was meant to be um, exposed to the intervention, but we did find that not all of the centers uh, were able to identify eligible patients and offer them the intervention. So when we looked at the number of women, so uh, the number of women who actually um, uh, received, received uh, chemotherapy in, um, in Ontario during the accrual period compared to the women that were uh, offered the intervention, the penetration varies from uh, a low of 50% um, at one of the centers to a high of about 86%. And this was despite quite a bit of work that we did with the centers to try to address some of the implementation barriers that we had identified in our previous uh, pilot study. Um, the other um, issue that um, warrants uh, mention is that um, uh, by being able to utilize existing data uh, from Ontario, existing administrative data, we did not have to collect um, uh, this data individually from patients, which made it a much more efficient trial from a cost perspective. Um, 
Lastly, um, I think one of the things that, I, that would also warrant mentioning is that there was quite a bit of work happening in the province of Ontario at the time um, of the conduction of the study uh, in relation to um, improving uh, toxicity management or symptom management for patients going through treatment. So some of the control centers were starting to offer um, probably um, maybe not as extensive, but uh, sort of lighter versions of uh, uh, proactive outreach uh, by nurses uh, during treatment. Uh, several of the centers also opened up um, urgent care clinics to help the patients uh, who were experiencing toxicity while going through therapy, which may have negatively or positively impacted the rate of emergency room visits and hospitalizations um, in some of the centers. Um, so I think for us, the takeaway was that while we did not see um, a decrease in the rate of emergency room visits and hospitalizations, we did see some improvements in uh, some of the patient reported outcomes. Um, and there were some really key learnings from an implementation science perspective. Uh, uh, several previous studies, which were more uh, smaller studies or studies um, which in used individual randomization and showed impact at the population level with respect to healthcare utilization, um, those we were not able to translate due to a population level impact uh, in this study. Uh, and I think when in the future, when we're doing this type of work, uh, we really need to think about what do we need to do to successfully scale up our interventions uh, that have shown promise in earlier phase and pilot studies of complex interventions.